Good Saturday evening, everybody, live and direct from downtown Memphis, Tennessee. I'm meteorologist Austin Onik with a quick check of your forecast. As we go into the rest of the weekend, things are going to remain quiet and actually should be staying pretty comfortable out there as we get into the next couple of days. Some very mild temperatures out across the area as we continue to see the polar vortex recede farther back toward the northeast and is not going to be a threat for us at this time. Likewise, not seeing any problems with anything involving severe weather, so so very good news on that. If you got any questions about the forecast, we'll do our best to answer what we can. Again, drop your location, your city, state, and whatever weather reports you've got into the comments section. Put that thermometer outside the kitchen window to some good use, and we'll feature those as much as we can, dropping um, through the uh, update here. If you can't stick around for our whole netcast, that's fine. Your complete forecast update in the blue bar scrolling on by here. Or, again, you can pick up, again, more information about our 7- to 10-day forecast. That's available, again, at wreg.com slash weather. Questions, concerns, ideas, again, you can email me at austin.onic at wreg.com. Very mild across the Mid-South today, looking, again, at some pretty mild conditions over the next several days. Let's go ahead and get started and show you a little bit more about what's going on. As we head into overnight, temperatures will remain cool-ish. It's going to be, again, kind of brisk in the morning with temperatures briefly dropping into the mid to upper 40s. The clouds will stick around in some form or fashion, partly cloudy at times, a little clearer at others, but again, mostly just cloudy skies out across the Mid-South. And those southerly winds will do a good job of keeping the temperatures up nowhere near the chilly conditions out there. If you take a sneak peek at the seven-day forecast, you may notice some very warm numbers out there into the next several days. And again, we'll talk more about that coming up here in just a little bit. Willie E. Standback from Shelby Forest, 56 degrees. Thank you very much. Wendy Taylor Harrell from South Haven, 55 degrees. William Skage, a little chillier in Detroit, 36 degrees for this evening. Thank you very much for that. And Ashley Norris, Cordova, 56 degrees. Thank you very much for that. Uh, Tony Teal, 40 degrees in Lawrence, Michigan. Thanks for joining us from way out of town for tonight. Appreciate all the weather reports out there. 70 degrees, the record high for today. That's not too bad, but take a look at this right here. Missed a record high by 5 degrees. So that was a very warm Groundhog Day for the Mid-South area. No, I'm not going to go over the Groundhog reports. You can get those again at WREG.com. And also, I'm assuming online at certain points in time, we'll tell you about a true American weather holiday. No rodent forecasting necessary. That's coming up here in just a little bit, so stay tuned for more on that. Million Dollars Baby Clark, Horn Lake, Mississippi, and 55 degrees. Thank you very much for that one. And everybody else checking in. Bolivar, pleasant grilling weather. Burt Bishop, 60 degrees. Save me a steak. I'd love to drop by for one of those a little bit later on. Rest of the evening, again, not doing too bad. If you're counting down the days until spring, we've passed the halfway point of the season. So we've got about 45 days and change. Spring will occur on March 20th. So we've got a little bit longer to go out there, about roughly, again, about a month and a half. But we are making progress toward the next change in season. So if you're looking forward to getting out of winter, for those of you who have had enough polar vortex for a while, then you'll be, again, pleased to know that we've got less than half the season to go for right now. So good news on that. Construction continues tonight. Again, I-240 shut down on the north and southbound lanes at this time. You can see the traffic on Poplar Avenue moving along here. And then back up in the upper left-hand corner of your screen, Quince Avenue is open in both directions. So if you need detours, you have these available to you because Park Avenue at this time is shut down. They're replacing the railroad construction crews, replacing part of the railroad trestle. You can see some of the cars making their way through at this time. But it's continuing the construction. Going to be a lot going on this weekend. Now, if that gets finished up and traffic is allowed to get back through again, if TDOT closes things down early, we'll let you know about that. So keep it tuned to News Channel 3. But as of right now, 240 at this time between Bill Morris Parkway and the 4240s flyover totally shut down again for this weekend. And expect a lot more of that coming up as we go throughout the next several months as we continue to upgrade our roadways. Definitely something we desperately desperately need out there for right now to make certain we all stay safer on the roadways. Sadie Ainsworth, hope I'm reading that correctly, 55 degrees in Little Rock. Thank you very much for that one. Diane Bonicelli, hope I'm saying that right. Arca Butler, Mississippi, 55 degrees. 
Chile in Lexington, Kentucky, 34 from Stephen Davis. And Denise McKittrick, uh, 69 degrees warm in Collierville. Sounds a, like a balmy evening there. Thank you very much uh, for checking in with that. Storm system, again, across much of the country, hardly anything going on. But we do have a decent storm system slamming in to the West Coast. A lot of energy with this. Tornado warnings around Fresno, California. Don't see that too often, but in February, it actually can be pretty typical. Head to my social media networks for more from uh, the area of the Weather Underground and Weather Nation posting a lot about the different patterns that happen when the weather slams into this area out here. A lot of activity going on in Southern California. So if you're traveling down this direction, there is a lot going on with delays thanks to rainfall and flash flooding taking place. So this could be some slowdowns if you're heading anywhere between, say, San Diego all the way back up to around San Francisco and even into the Cascades. We're getting some pretty good amounts of snowfall up that direction from the Sierras all the way up into the Cascades. So this, again, could be slowing things down as we go throughout the next couple of days. Not that much going on here. Again, Storm Tracker 3S radar is a clean sweep. Should be staying completely and totally clean sweep at least through tomorrow into and around the Area 4 right now. Ronnie Mowdy, hope I'm saying that right, 67 in Oxford, and hate to hear about the rain coming. Yeah, it does look like kind of a soggy forecast at this point in time. If you're heading west or northwest, anything, say, west of the Twin Cities or back into the Rockies, a lot of winter weather heading on through here. Now, we're not going to get any of this. The storm system causing all this, yes, is going to affect us, but right now, no winter weather at this time. But again, from the Great Lakes back to the west coast, could be some slowdowns in travel here. So if you're heading that direction, something to consider. Continued very mild metro area remaining in the upper 50s to right about 60 degrees. A few upper 40s out there around Bethel Springs Elementary. WeatherNet three sites across the Mid-South. Again, tons of weather information live real time. And you can pick that up again at WREG.com slash weather if you'd like to see more about what's going on there. Okay, overnight, News Channel 3 at 10, 40s and 50s. Those southerly winds, the moving lines on screen will be giving us again some temperatures quite much on the mild side. So no problems at all with very cold weather into daybreak tomorrow, but there are going to be a lot more clouds out there. So that may block out some more of uh, sunrise tomorrow, especially northeast Mississippi. Gray colors again showing the cloud cover being thickest around here. Now through the rest of the day, those southerly winds will be continuing. So we'll see the clouds stick around very mild at lunchtime. Temperatures back in the lower 60s and then heading into the lower to mid 60s, even some upper 60s out there as we go into tomorrow. So some very mild conditions. I'd enjoy outside as much as you possibly can tomorrow because over the next several days, good possibility as we get into and around uh, the next several days looking at very soggy conditions heading on through if everything holds, but we'll talk about that coming up here in just a little bit. Rest of the afternoon into tomorrow evening, clouds start to stack up back to the west, and that's also where we start to see more chances of rainfall. Not great chances right off the bat, but as we go into Monday, that's where we'll start to see better chances of rain showers and needing anything in the way of the umbrella. 51 in Gleason, Tennessee, Trey Harris. Uh, thank you very much for that one and everybody else checking in from across the Mid-South area for tonight. Appreciate all the weather reports there. Could be some patchy fog in northeast Mississippi tomorrow morning. Uh, we'll keep our eyes on that, so keep it tuned for more on News Channel 3 Daybreak. All right, seven-day forecast starting with tomorrow. Some, again, very nice temperatures out there as we get into the next several days. Mid to upper 60s across the area for tomorrow with showers developing after sunset and dinner time. Could be a soggy walk to school for the kids Monday morning and returning back home again Monday afternoon. And temperatures, again, way above normal for this time of the year. Now, for a true American weather holiday, you got to go with National Weather Person's Day. Just throwing that out there for everybody. That'll be February 5th on Tuesday, not the fake, furry, faux forecaster type holiday that we had today. So, again, real American weather holiday coming up, and the showers will be continuing off and on. Now, going toward Wednesday into Thursday, there is going to be that possibility of maybe some stronger thunderstorms out there. It doesn't look like much right now, but when you start seeing this percentage of coverage of rain and thunderstorms, you, at this time of the year, you really want to start paying attention to that because, again, we are right now in the prime severe weather season for the Mid-South. That's not hyping anything. That is just pure 
mathematical statistics. So now, again, is the best time to be prepared for severe weather before we move into those summer doldrums after about April and into the rest of August and September. So right now, this is where we can get the nastiest weather. Again, I'm not seeing any signs of severe weather, but Wednesday and Thursday, definitely a time to keep updated on what's going on with the weather experts. Now notice also a pretty good fall off out there from near 70 on Thursday to 40s, mid 40s on Friday with the rain chances continuing, dwindling a bit into next weekend. And then finally getting some clearing skies back at least a bit by next Monday. But almost every single day this week does have at least some possibility of rain and better possibilities of thunderstorms out there. Now maybe cool enough into this next weekend, Friday into Saturday, of picking up some rain mixed with snow. It's a minuscule chance, but it is still possible. So once again, it's going to be one of those things that we're going to need at this point in time. So we'll continue again to see some pretty chilly conditions out there. Dion Gaither, LSU, just one point. Thanks for the sports update, if I'm not mistaken. I haven't tuned into anything since the KU game for today, but thank you very much on that. Rosalind Williams from Memphis, Tennessee. Beautiful day today. Thank you very much uh, for that one. And everybody else checking in from across the area for tonight. Again, little, if anything, really in the way of major weather coming our way. So good news on that. Thanks to News Channel 3 viewer Jeffrey Cordell from Blackfish Lake. A very nice view of sunrise this morning. Spectacular sky on fire view, as a matter of fact. D. Sagers doing the winter vacation thing very well from Jehuatanejo, Mexico. Beautiful view overlooking parts of the Pacific and a beautiful blue sky out there with temperatures back in the 80s earlier this week before coming back to the 20s in Memphis as the polar vortex went rampaging on through. So beautiful view from south of the border there. Jason Peacock from the Ole Miss campus from Vaught-Hemingway Stadium. Beautiful view of some great sunrise pictures taking place on the Ole Miss campus. Thank you very much for those. And Tamara Theobald, a very nice, if not somewhat cloudy start to Saturday morning somewhere in Memphis. Thank you, everybody, for those. If you've got weather pictures, we'd love to show them like this, also on our social media pages, so please send them to me. Tweet them to me, post them on Facebook, link them to me on Instagram, or, once again, easiest way to do it, email me at austin.onic at wreg.com. Would love to have your pictures out there for everybody to take a look at. Now, once again, because we are in that time frame for severe weather, now's the time to learn about it. You might have just moved to this area and never have experienced a tornado warning before. If you'd like to know more, the National Weather Service in Memphis has a training course called Skywarn. It's a great course to take. It lasts about an hour, hour and a half out of your time totally free, paid for by your tax dollars and my tax dollars. The first four meetings are coming up at these locations across the Mid-South, four out of maybe a baker's dozen of them across the area. So definitely a good idea to see where the next meetings are going to be so you can take these things and learn what to look for before and during severe weather and what to report as and after severe weather moves through your area. The information that you provide could save someone's life down the line that's one of the best things out there for citizen involvement. And if you'd like to know more about this, weather.gov slash MEG. If you can't remember the three-letter title, the designator for the National Weather Service in Memphis, that's okay. Just go to weather.gov, click on the map for the Mid-South, and that'll take you right to the National Weather Service in Memphis so you can learn more about this. When's the one for Memphis? Stay tuned. We'll let you know about that over the next several days and weeks for that matter. Coming up in just about half an hour, join me on my Facebook page for a quick update of what's going on around the world. We'll do a special segment called Weather Where the Troops Are. Again, thanking everybody out there for wearing the uniform of their country. And we'll take a look at spots like Thule Air Base in Greenland. A little bit more if I'm saying that correctly, I hope, or that is Thule if I'm not mistaken. I'm not sure. Minus 20 the current temperature, wind chill of minus 40 as that polar vortex makes some very cold air making its way on through with wind gusts over about 20 miles per hour. So some very cold numbers into and around the area of northwestern Greenland for tonight. Tons of other areas to talk about. We'll get to those coming up again on my Facebook page, and that'll be at about 9 o'clock tonight. So join me there also on Periscope and also on Twitter as well. One more check of the forecast heading into daybreak tomorrow. Temperatures again bottoming out in the upper 40s with mostly cloudy skies. 
Not seeing any rainfall for right now, but more chances of rain as we get into early on Sunday evening. And that'll be just rainfall, not looking at too much of anything else. Join me with Bob and Josh's new time Monday through Thursday, 6 to 8 a.m. on AM 730 and AM 1600. We'll give you your News Channel 3 forecast on the radio. If you can't pick up their signal, join them online at talkbacklivenetwork.org. And again, that'll be bright and early Monday morning at 6 a.m. for Sports Chat Extraordinaire throughout the rest of the Mid-South area. That'll wrap it up for this edition of News Channel 3's exclusive video weather blog, Weather Overtime. Again, questions, ideas, something you'd like to see on here, let me know. Again, drop me a line at austin.onic at wreg.com. I'll have an update on News Channel 3 at 10 and, of course, bright and early tomorrow morning on News Channel 3 Daybreak. That'll wrap it up here. Keep it tuned to News Channel 3 throughout the rest of the weekend. And thanks for joining us for tonight's edition of News Channel 3's weather blog, Weather Overtime.